It's windy. There's such a personal connection with Norway. Like my granddad cycled all there in the early 1950s. He never tell anybody about this trip. It's only in his photo album that my mum told me about it after he died. A lot of the planning for Norway became about how do we find where these images were taken. We kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps. I can't really imagine the sort of circumstances that he experienced cycling in Norway in 1952. Really, the essence of it is pretty much the same. You're still pedalling, you still have bad weather, you're still going to have sunny days. For some things to stay the same, you can't change nature. We've just been riding some amazing single tracks, and our mood could not be any better. <laughs> Norway was such a fantastic place to go. It looked spectacular with the fjords and quite a lot of wilderness. All <laughs> downhill. Oh my god! This is amazing. Hi! That was the best descent of the whole trip. I didn't want to ride the exact same route as my granddad. What time is it going to get dark? So they kind of allowed us to leave our own mark, I suppose, in terms of the family history. So I'm literally standing in the same place as my granddad 65 years later. We got here by bike as well. I could never imagine a life without bikes. I feel sorry for people without bikes. That sounds horrific, but I just love them that much. And I also love Claire very much. Mm. Yeah! <laughs> I always called Matt's bike the mistress because I knew that when I got in a relationship with Matt, there'd be three people in it, me, him and the bike. 